Every day we're learning more information on COVID-19, which is shown to affect many of our organs in the body, including our lungs, hearts, kidneys, uh, even our eyes. This morning, our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us to talk about the first report from China on COVID-19's affecting the brain. Good morning, Dr. Coley. So what are the findings of this new study? So Natasha, this was a study of 214 patients who were hospitalized. So these people were at least sick enough to have moderate to severe COVID infection. These aren't the mild cases we're talking about. And it was a little bit of a surprise to see that 36% of them had neurological manifestations. So that's more than one in three patients. And there were a couple of interesting things that were also noted. The first was that the neurological manifestations actually tended to be a sign of more severe illness. So the people that were more severely ill uh, were more likely to have these neurological manifestations. The second was that the type of neurological manifestation actually presented at a different time. So the people that had mild neurological manifestations, like loss of taste or smell, things we've talked about before, that happened very early, like one or two days in, and sometimes it was the first sign of the COVID infection. Whereas people who had more severe neurological manifestations, seizures, comas, strokes, loss of consciousness, that happened much later and usually was a complication of the illness rather than the first sign. Yeah, that's very interesting. So you talk about loss of taste, uh, smell, seizures. What are the types of neurological manifestations that we're seeing of COVID-19? So three main types that we can divide it up into. The first is central nervous system. So that's your brain and spinal cord. Those tended to unfortunately be the majority of, of manifestations and those are the most severe. Those are things like coma, seizures, stroke, or loss of consciousness. The second type of manifestation is the peripheral nervous system. That's our nervous system that interacts with the environment. So the receptors that we have, our skin, our nose, our vision, um, and those were the other types of manifestations, a little less common than the central nervous system ones, but certainly, as I had said, loss of taste and smell, those could be the first manifestations of the illness. And then the third one, which was interesting, was actually injury to the skeletal muscle. So there was actually muscle breakdown from the inflammation that occurred. And this is not something new. We've actually seen this in SARS and MERS as well. So what's thought to be the mechanism or cause of these symptoms? You know, there's still a lot of speculation going on as to what's causing this. We do know that on autopsy specimens, there's direct inflammation of the neuronal tissue. Now, whether that inflammation is a result of the virus actually invading the nerves or whether it's a systemic response causing inflammation is a little bit unknown. There is some theories that with this particular virus, based on what it did in SARS and MERS, that it actually can spread to the brain in a retrograde fashion, which means, for example, if you have the virus in your nose, it can actually jump onto your olfactory nerve, almost like a train track, and track up into the brain that way and cause direct inflammation of the brain cells. Wow, there's so much that we're learning about this virus. Um, you know, it's an ever-changing uh, process. Dr. Coley, thank you so much for breaking that down.